continuing on in our spring break slides. Um, this one is called The Kiss. It is by the artist Gustav Klimp, uh, done in 1907 to 1908. Oil on canvas, Belvedere, Austria. And pay attention really closely to the size. This is in the shape of a square. Okay, and I'm just kind of taking my mouse right now and just kind of going along um, in that particular direction to, sh to indicate that this is important to know that this is in a square. You might have seen this more kind of chopped off to be more resemblance of a rectangle, but it's supposed to be 5 feet 11 inches by 5 feet and 11 inches. So it's just under 6 by 6 feet. So this is pretty big. Okay, there's actually, side note, just wanted to tell you, there is a really good movie. It used to be on Netflix, not sure if it's still there, but it's called The Woman in Gold. And it is all about these paintings by Gustav Klimt. Um, it is a fascinating movie. It's got Ryan Reynolds in it, so if you like him, you might enjoy watching that. Um, it was done just a few years ago, so it's not that old. Um, and again, it's called Women in Gold, and it used to be on Netflix. So if you got time later on, take a look at it. Watch it for a few minutes. You might really get into it. Um, and they actually, I think they do show the kiss. Like, they actually show the museum, the Belvedere Museum. They show some of his other pieces. Um, and you would really enjoy watching that video. So let me know if you watch it, because I'm telling you, it's one of those movies that you'd, you'd want to watch again. Okay, so enough about that. We need to just cover, I actually don't have too, too many notes about this one, but um, Gustav Klint. He was a painter working in Vienna. Um, he's resem he's almost, re blah, and is almost remembered for the works he did during his golden period. And this is one obviously going to be in his golden period from 1900 to 1910. So this is in 07 to 08. So this is going to be classified under that. So the golden period for Klimp, um, including the kiss. Okay. Um, just to know a little bit more of context, just a little bit about his background. Um, his father was a goldsmith um, at a young, and as a young man, Klimt became the leader of a group of artists called the Vienna Succession. Please write that down. Vienna, V-I-E-N-N-A, and then Succession, S-U-C-C-E-S-I-O-N. And you probably might assume what this is going to be about. He's going to be a rebel. He's going against the academic art rules, okay? So we have totally have started to just see no more reference of seeing those really fine art paintings from Paris that we had seen in the past, okay? So he's rebelling against the academic art rules. Um, he's being more conservative. He's going back to more traditional values in general. He's influenced by the theorist Freud, um, who also lived and worked in Vienna. So you can actually classify him under um, symbolists, like um, our guy we just saw earlier, Edward Monk, who did the scream. Um, who focuses on not just portraying the appearance of the exterior world, which they thought was trivial, but on the interior world of the human existence, okay? So like the symbolists, okay, again, he's part of the symbolist art movement, please write that down, um, Clint explored themes of universal experience. So the cycle of life and death, love, passion. Um, can any of y'all guess what particular theme for this one would be. Um, if you said passion, you'd be correct. Okay. Um, and just to kind of point out for this particular scene, obviously you can see it's a man and a woman. You can see them. It almost is like you see them from like a, a bird's eye view from the way that their um, head is positioned, how you can see the top of his head and then you see the side of her head. Um, but then in another way, you can see the side of her feet. So I guess you could still I guess you can classify it. So you look at it from above looking down. Um, I just wanted you to pay attention to note how the hands are. Okay, the hands are very different from how the man is from the woman. Um, if you kind of separate the two, they're both experiencing different sensations. Okay, but sharing joy while joined to the earth and blossoming through nature. Okay, you notice that she's got her little robe. He's got his little robe. And they're almost in enthralled and 
with another robe that goes around them. Um, you can see that they're using the use, um, Clint uses the use of gold and yellows um, to really define their individuality. Um, and it's almost like, again, like there's, they have their own individual and you can see that what, what I'm trying to say for that is you can see it through the way that they have their own kind of patterns and their shapes. Okay. You see for the woman, she's got more circles and you can see for the man, he has more straight rectilinear, like rectangles and squares. And we're actually going to talk about that in just a minute. You see more color, you see more neutral color. Okay. And then enveloped around them, you see another type of, um, beam of gold. I don't know what I was trying to say right there. Um, <clears throat> just seeing how they're individual and then they're enthroned together. Okay. All right. Moving on. Almost done. Um, one more thing to note about context for Gustav Klimt that's really going to probably take you back in time. Um, 1902, he made two trips to a place called Ravenna, Italy. I think we've heard of that place before, where he became um, encompassed with all the colorful, patternful, reflective, decorative mosaics. Okay, this should all be ringing a bell. Um, of the interior Byzantine churches. Okay, like, which church am I going to say begins with an S? San Fintel. Okay, the San Fintel church where you have the Justinian and his attendants, how they look so heavenly. I think you can definitely bring this back to the Byzantine um, in a few different ways. Again, that gold, the same color being used, use of gold in the background and the robes um, and the golden vines dangling down onto the flowered ground beneath the woman. You can kind of see how that's getting cascaded down below. Lots of patterns. Again, just kind of making a note, um, side note, you can see lots of patterns, again, in what they're wearing in the background, into the floral, into, again, those vines that are going in. Really sa sh simple shapes. Like, if you look at those vines, they're just triangles, okay? Um, so it's very decorative, okay? And I think this is going to kind of get into being more in that ornate sense, um, that more art nouveau, okay? Where we're starting to see um, the use of patterns, the use of just decorations uh, really starting to kind of take place. And we'll actually start to see that show up in our next slide, the Carson Peary Scott House in the iron facade, um, the entryway, how he's got all these rural floral vine all done in cast iron so we're starting to see this kind of new uh, movement occur um, besides the symbolist again it's called art nouveau um, and where you're, you're going to really start to see these these uses of patterns so the decorative patterns you see from the flowers um, uh, the rectangles that are in his robes, um, the concentric circles that are in her robes, again, um, use of symbols, okay? If you started to kind of pick up on what I was going to say earlier, just like how I said in Edward Monk, how colors um, that we talk about in my art class, studio class, how colors can be associated with particular emotions. And again, we're, I gave you the example of like red and green, um, love can be used for red um, and green could be used for like nature or recycle or money you have that same kind of concept with shapes okay so i want you to just note how you see for him you see the shape of more straight lines more of a straight edge you see more rectilinear you see rectangles squares and you even get a sense more of just neutral colors being used that's a symbol for male Okay, that's actually just a symbol from it. If you look it up, you'll notice that males often have more of a straight edge as opposed to a woman. We have more curves, so we're going to be more influenced with circles. Okay, so and again, you can kind of clearly see that. Um, and then you could even further go on and discuss what they have um, discussion or they have not discussions, but they have all these um, all this research that's backed up with how squares and rectangles and circles, what they all represent in meaning, but rectangles, squares, rectilinear, straight for men, curves, circles, going to be for women, okay? Um, and then very, very last thing, this one is to wrap it up, 
Um, this is done on a flat gold background, suggesting the Byzantine mosa the mosaics that are in that heavenly realm, that ethereal realm that we would always discuss. How you can have this transcendence experience um, with the bliss of this um, unity between this man and this woman. Okay. This is a really nice slide. Um, glad this is part of the, the 250. And you got his name down here at the bottom. Don't know if you saw that. Um, okay. Jebber, jabbering, stopping. Uh, this is Miss Howard signing out.